So we're jumping into net applications of Extrema. So applications of finding maximum and minimum values. And so the following will help you when you're trying to solve these. So solving your optimization problems, first it's helpful to understand the problem. Um, so sometimes just reading through it once and then reading through it again and starting to pick out the information that is in there is really helpful. So you wanna clearly identify what quantity is either being maximized or minimized. And then some, a lot of times making sketches are helpful. And we're gonna work on more word problems later on and uh, probably next week, which are related rates, which are also, this is, would help us to do this. Okay, so we're gonna read through it. We're gonna figure out what we're maximizing or minimizing, what quantity. We're gonna make a sketch if needed. Then we're gonna create equations relevant to the context of the problem using information given. So one of these should describe the quantity to be optimized. We'll call this the fundamental equation. So if it's wanting us to maximize area of a rectangle, we know what the formula is for the area of a rectangle, which is length times width. That in that case would be the fundamental equation, maximizing the area. If the fundamental equation defines the quantity to be optimized as a function of more than one variable, then we need to reduce it to a single variable function using substitution derived from other equations. So for instance, area of length times width, that is two different variables, length and width. We wanna create this so that it's just in terms of length or just in terms of width. And so we can do that because we'll be given other um, equations in there that are, are gonna be restrictions um, to what we need for that problem that we're maximizing or minimizing. You wanna identify the domain of the function, keeping in mind the context of the problem. So going back to area, if we're thinking about area, it doesn't make sense to have negative length or negative width. It doesn't make sense really to have zero as a length or a width, right? And so we have to think about that domain when we're doing this. So find extreme values of this problem on the determined domain, and then we're gonna identify all the relevant quantities of the problem. So let's start kind of easier where we're not trying to figure out what is that fundamental equation. We're not trying to figure out the constraints, those equations for constraints for the problem. Let's say we're given the following. So let's say that X plus Y is 180. It gives us, and the product P equals XY is as large as possible. Okay, so I'm sorry. So let me read the directions above. So find non-negative numbers X and Y that satisfy the given requirements. Give the optimum value of the indicated expression. So X plus Y is equal to 180 and the product P is equal to XY is as large as possible. Okay, so this is what we're maximizing. It told us in here that there are numbers, the product was non-negative. So we're gonna have to be greater than or equal to zero. And I doubt it's equal to zero because that's not gonna give us something big, right? Multiplying by zero, zero. So maximizing the, this, and here we have our constraint. So 
So we're trying to maximize, we need to take the derivative. The problem is that our function is in terms of X and Y. And so we can use one of our constraints, which in this case, there's only this one, to solve for one variable in terms of the other. So it doesn't matter which one you wanna do in this case. So let's maybe solve for X. A lot of times we solve for y, it doesn't matter though. So let's solve for x, so let's get x by itself. And so to get x by itself, we would have x is equal to, let's subtract y on both sides. So we have 180 minus y. And so we can now rewrite our profit function. This again was equal to x times y. We have our x here, but our y value We just found, found oops, uh, that this is where I make a mist. Um, <laughs> it's actually x is equal to this. So let's go back. X is in terms of y. So let's write in what x is in terms of y, which is 180 minus y, all times y. So now we have our product what we're trying to ma maximize in terms of just one variable. So I could go through here and I could take the derivative now, but there were sometimes ways to make um, taking the derivative easier. And in this case, it would be much easier instead of using the product rules to first to distribute. So let's do that. So prob um, P is equal to 180Y minus Y squared. We just distributed it this Y to each term. And so now we wanna find our critical numbers. We're gonna find the derivative. So looking at P prime, this is equal to, well, the derivative of 180, Y is just 180 minus the derivative of Y squared is two Y. So we're looking at when is P prime equal to zero? or when is 180 minus 2y is equal to zero. So solving for that, we could add 2y to both sides. We get 180 equals 2y. Divide both sides by two, we get y is equal to 90. Okay, so we found one of the variables. And if our, function was in terms of more than one variable, which it was, we need to go back in and find what the other variable is. Well, we know here a couple of things. We know that x plus y is 180. We actually solve for x. x is 180 minus y. So if that's the case, then I know then x has to be equal to 180 minus y, which is 90. So x must equal 90. So 90 plus 90 would give me my constraint. The product would be 90 times 90. And that product is equal to 8,100. We really should be testing to make sure that this is where a max occurs and not a min occurs. Um, so there's a couple ways we can do this. We can see where it's increasing, decreasing, or we can just apply our second derivative test. So let's just make sure that's where a max occurs. So recall that second derivative test. Let's first take the second derivative of 180 minus 2y. That was our first derivative. So the derivative of that is just negative two. If we plug in our critical number into the second derivative, which is 90, notice that there's no y in here. It fell away when we took the derivative. So notice that this number in here is equal to negative two. This number is smaller than zero. So I think of it of concavity. Smaller than zero, it's 
facing down, can't hold anything that's negative. So this is a max. So that's a max by the second derivative test. So our maximum product is 8,100. And that occurs again when y is 90 and x is 90. So let's jump into some word problems using the method that we just talked about to optimize. So in this word problem, it says a campground owner has 1,400 meters of fencing. He wants to enclose a rectangular field bordering a river with no fencing needed along the river. Let X represent the width of the field. Okay, so let's pull together what they have. So first of all, we wanna figure out what we're trying to maximize. Um, the campground owner has 1,400 meters of fencing. He wants to enclose a rectangular field bordering a river. So let's kind of draw our sketch. We have some river here. He wants some rectangular fencing, but we don't need it here. And they wanted the width to be X. I don't know if we can call this as length. Okay, so we want to maximize area. And so we know area is equal to, in this case, X times length. We have some constraints. We're given that they only have 1,400 meters of fencing. And it doesn't make sense to have negative or zero as our length or width. So we can rewrite this. So we can, we know that we're gonna sum two X's and this length and that would be 1,400 meters. So 1,400 meters is equal to two times X plus L. So again, we wanna go back to what we're maximizing or minimizing, maximizing in this case, and we wanna write this area just in terms of X or just in terms of L. So let's go back to our constraint and let's, in this case, let's solve for L. So I could subtract two X on both sides and I would get my length is equal to 1400 minus two X. So let's go back in for our area. This is now equal to X times our length, but our length is 1400 minus two X. So we wanna maximize this. We wanna find our critical numbers. And so we wanna find out where this derivative is equal to zero. And so we're gonna, before we take the derivative, let's, let's distribute. So A is equal to 1400X minus 2X squared. So the derivative, derivative of 1400X is 1400 minus the derivative of 2X squared is 4X. We wanna find when this is equal to zero and undefined, but it's defined everywhere. So 1400 minus 4X equals zero. Let's add 4x to both sides. So we have this 1,400 equals 4x 
divide both sides by four. Okay, let's see about this. Four goes into 14 three times. That gives me 12. And so 14 minus 12 is two. So I'm gonna move four into 20, which is five. Goes in evenly, four goes into zero, zero, 100. So 1400 divided by four is 350. We wanna make sure this is a max. And again, we could see where it's increasing or decreasing, or we can use that second derivative test. And so if I look at the second derivative of my area function, I get back negative four. Again, this one is always smaller than zero. And so the max occurs at 350. Okay, so we're almost there. This is in meters. So we know what X is. We need 350 meters for our width, but our length, we need to find that. And so our length is equal to 1,400 minus two times 350. So our length is equal to 1,400 minus two times 350, that's 700. So our length is equal to 700 meters. They were asking for the maximum area. We found the length and the width that will give us the maximum area. The maximum area though is, Three fifty times seven hundred. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm gonna have three zeros at least. Seven times five is thirty-five. Carry my three. Seven times three is twenty-one plus that three, so twenty-four. So I have two hundred and forty-five thousand meters squared is the maximum area. Okay, so we're looking at another example for optimization. And let me just read through the problem and we'll pick out the information and start figuring out what our equations are what our fundamental equation is that we're trying to maximize or minimize. So the problem says a fence must be built to enclose a rectangular area of 20,000 feet squared. Fencing material costs 250 per foot for two sides facing north and south and 320 per foot for the other two sides. Find the cost of the least expensive, um, expensive fence. Okay, so again, we have some fencing. Again, it's a rectangle, but we're given different things. And here, we're given that the cost north and south, that was $2.50. Per foot. And then the other two sides, that cost is equal to $3.20. We're trying to minimize. So this is our 
fundamental equation. So we're trying to minimize cost. Okay, well, let's think about the cost. Cost is gonna equal to, well, we have two sides here. So let's call them Y. So I know two times Y, that length, all times the cost per foot. So two Y is the number of feet I'm gonna need for these two sides. And I know that it's $3.20 per foot. Plus, I have, let's call these this X over here. So I have two lengths of X that I'm gonna have to put fencing on. So let X equal the number of feet that we're gonna need. And that cost is 250. So X is equal to number of feet, and then Y is equal to number of feet. So we can clean this up a little bit, our cost function. So two times 320. So I'm gonna just read, write that as 6.4 Y plus two times 250. So two times 2.5, that's five X. So we need to rewrite cost in terms of just X or cost in terms of just Y. We're given a little bit more information and that's what's gonna help us to be able to write this in terms of one variable. It says a fence must be built to enclose a rectangular area of 20,000 square feet. So we actually know what this area is. And this area in here, 20,000 square feet. Okay, so we have a constraint. We know that X times Y area is equal to 20,000. So we either wanna solve for X in terms of Y or Y in terms of X. Let's solve for Y. So I can get Y by itself by dividing both sides by X. So we get Y is 20,000 all over X. So now we made it so that we can rewrite cost just in terms of X. So we have cost is 6.4 times y, but we just found that y was 20,000 divided by x, then plus 5x. So 20,000 times 6.4. So that gives us 128,000 over X. We're gonna take the derivative here. So let's rewrite that over X as bringing it up and making that X to the negative one power. So we would, could rewrite this as 128,000 X to the negative one power plus five X. It's better than having to go use the quotient rule of the uh, first piece. So now we are set to take the derivative. So the derivative of 128,000 X to the negative one power is negative 128,000 X to the negative two power plus the derivative of five X is five. So we're trying to find when is C prime equal to zero. So let's rewrite this. So this is negative 128,000 all over x squared plus five, when is that equal to zero? Let's, we can either multiply it by x squared right now, or we can rewrite this. This is the same thing as let's add that 128,000 over x squared 
five equals 128,000 over x squared. We multiply both sides by x squared now. We get five x squared equals 128,000. Let's divide both sides by five. So we get x squared equals 25,600. Take the square root of both sides. Normally we put this plus or minus here, but a lot of times students forget that when they're solving square root problems. The thing is that we wouldn't actually even look at the negative because of the word problem. So taking the square root of that, we get x equals 160. x equals negative 160 is not in the domain. So again, we need to, to show that this is actually a maximum occurring when x is 160. Once we show that, then we can go in and figure out what y is. And then we can figure out what the minimum cost is because that's what they want is what is the minimum cost. So if we go back to the first derivative, again, we can use that second derivative test. So let's look at the second derivative. And so the derivative of negative 128,000 x to the negative two. So let's bring down that negative two. So that would be two times 128,000, which is 256. 256,000. x to the negative three power. So that's the double derivative because plus the derivative of five is zero. So notice that this is equal to, another way to rewrite this, maybe to help you see it, it's 256,000 all over x cubed. So when we go back in and we plug in 160 here, notice that that's gonna be greater than zero greater than zero, I think of it as concave up, the bowl hold stuff, it's positive. Um, and so, let me show it visually without my hands. And so we can see that that's gonna be a min. So a min does occur. When x equals 160, and we're in terms of feet. So we need to figure out what is our y value. Well, right over here, we're given that y, we solved y was equal to 20,000 divided by x. So we would get y is equal to 20,000 divided by x, which is 160. Which gets us 125. And so this is feet. So we need 160 feet on the north-south end. So our cost equals, so where'd it go? So our cost equals 6.4y. We had changed it a little bit, right? So 
6.4 times y, which is 125 feet, plus 5 times 160. So 6.4 times 125, that's 800 plus 5 times 160 is 800. So minimum cost is $1,600. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. We'll probably just have enough time to set up the problem itself and figure out what we need to maximize or minimize. So we're looking at packaging design and we're given that a television ma manufacturing firm needs to design an open topped box with a square base. The box must hold 32 inches cubed. Find the dimensions of the box that can be built with minimum amount of materials. Okay, so they want to minimize our cost because um, with materials and we want our minimum amount of materials. So minimum amount of material for an open. If we think about this, they tell us a couple of things. The box must hold 32 inches cubed. So we're given that the volume is 32 inches cubed. Okay, well, let's think about the equation for volume. Volume is for box is length times width times height. And we know that this is 32. So right now we actually have an equation with three variables and we just want it in terms, well, that's not even what we're maximizing. So just, it's okay. Um, it also tells us the box um, has a square base. So our base, basically that's telling me that these, the length and the width, I'm not very good at 3D, 3D. But that has to be the same. So length and width have to be the same. Let's just call that X. And then we have some height, which we don't know what it is. If you think about a box, first, let's just think about uh, a, a piece of cardboard, right? And let's say we wanna create a box. We're basically cutting out a square in here. So that this is gone. Those corners are gone, and then we're gonna just build, fold up those edges. And so we know that this in here, let's see if we can figure this out, is X. This in here is X. This in here is X. This in here is X.
we're minimizing the amount of material. So we, I think we're minimizing surface area. Okay. This right here, these little pieces that we cut out, this is gonna help us figure out what the height is when we fold that up, right? Let's say that we wanna now look at the pieces of the area. So if I look at the area of the base, the bottom of my box, that area in there, is gonna be x times x. Then if I look at the area of this piece, well, that would be length times width. So it would be x times h, so plus xh. But notice that's xh four times. This would be x times h. So there's another one, x times h. So there's another one, and here's another one. So there's four of those x times h's. So right now I have surface area is equal to x squared plus four xh. We almost got it into one variable. And this is where we're gonna go back and look at our volume. Volume, we know our length and our width is X. So here, because it's a box or a square, we have 32 equals X times X times H. So 32 is equal to X squared H. So we want H in terms of X. So get, to get H by itself, we can divide both sides by X squared. So H is 32 over the X squared. So we now have our formula that we're trying to minimize. SA, which is X squared plus four times X times H and H in this case was 32 X squared. I would clean this up before I took the derivative. So we have X squared plus four times 32. So that's 128. And we have an X in the numerator, X squared in the denominator. So canceling, we are left with a single X in the denominator. And let's rewrite this so that we don't have to use a quotient rule. So surface area is equal to x squared plus 128x to the negative one. So we're trying to minimize this. So I'm gonna stop there because we're out of time, but we had set it up and I, I, I knew that was probably gonna happen. So hopefully from there you can solve for, for the minimum. If you want, I have student hours now so I could finish this problem if you wanted me to.